Hello everybody. Today's lab we're going to be looking at the accuracy and the precision of different types of laboratory glassware. So we need to cover a few little background uh, pieces. First, accuracy is always determined by percent error. So how close is your measured value to the accepted value? So if we look at, for example, the data that I have for set A and for set B, let's say we're just, these are masses. I don't have a unit there. I just threw some numbers in to sort of demonstrate this. So let's say we're talking about grams and let's say I mass a bunch of different things that should have the same mass. The average for group A is 15. The average for group B is 15. They both involve 11 data points. And if the true value is 15, that means the average value for both of these data sets has a percent error of zero. Both of these data sets are accurate. However, both of these data sets are not very precise. If I look at set A, I have values ranging from 13 to 17. And for B, I have values ranging from 8 to 22. Now, just by looking at that, you can see that B is going to be less precise than A. But we use a statistical tool called standard deviation, standard deviation um, to determine how precise a set of measurements are. And the general definition of it is how a group of measurements deviate from the mean. How close are your data points clumped around the average? So the standard deviation for group one is one. The standard deviation for group B is 4.27. So what this means is it's 15 plus or minus one, essentially 15 plus or minus 4.27. One standard deviation, so this plus or minus one, is going to incorporate 68% of the data. That's how this standard deviation works. Two standard deviations, so if it's 15 plus or minus two, that incorporates 95% of the data, and three standard deviations will incorporate 99% of the data. Now, the smaller the standard deviation is, the more precise the measurements are. So this is set A and set B graphed as what are called bell curves. And you always look at bell curves with relation to standard deviation. So what this means is, if we have the same scale here, we have eight to 22, Set A has a sharper curve than B. This is spread out over a wider area. So clearly by looking at this, this is less precise than this. This, we have all of our data, we have 68% of the data plus or minus one clumped around the mean, which is 15. So the narrower the curve, the smaller the standard deviation, the greater the precision. Now, one thing I do wanna talk about with bell curves, because they are based on standard deviation and 68% of the data is within one standard deviation, 95 is within two and 99% is within three. When you say to a teacher after you take a test, will there be a curve? You really don't know what you're asking for. What a curve is, if, if things are graded on a curve, what professors will do is they find out what the mean is, and usually it's about 75, and they adjust all the scores plus or minus so that they fit within a bell curve. So a true curve on an assessment means your grade can be knocked up or your grade can be knocked down. So when you say, is there gonna be a curve, you really should be saying, are you giving us free points? Because that's what everyone wants. You don't want to be marked down. And this actually happened to my daughter in college she did too well on a paper. They marked her down so that it would fit within a curve. Okay, the equipment we're using for today is we're gonna be using a disposable pipette or an eyedropper, thermometer, electronic balance. This is called a volumetric flask and I'm gonna demonstrate how you use this. This is designed to fill a set volume. This one is a 100 mil uh, volumetric flask, but we can get ones in all different sizes. Um, this is a pipette bulb. This is a burette. This is a pipette. We have two graduated cylinders, a 10 mil and a 100 mil, 150 mil beaker. And then we have a larger beaker, which I'm going to fill with distilled water. So you're gonna grab your 250 mil beaker. You're gonna go over to the distilled water. And then this is the water you're gonna be working with for the lab. So the first part of the lab, you're gonna be working with glassware that is designed to contain 
a set amount of liquid. So that does not include my, vo my volumetric pipette or my burette, and I'll talk about those in a little bit. So what to contain means is if I fill this with 100 milliliters of water, it contains 100 milliliters, but then when I pour it out, there's gonna be some water left inside. So it didn't really deliver 100 milliliters. It contained that amount, it didn't deliver that amount. So the pieces of equipment we're working with that contain a set amount of liquid are gonna be your graduated cylinders, your beaker, and your volumetric. The beaker and the graduated cylinders, you can add varying amounts. So you can measure out zero to 100 mils, zero to 150 mils, zero to 10 mils. This, you can only measure 100 mils, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to measure out the volume stated in the lab, and then we're gonna get the mass of that water. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate a density and compare that to the true density of water at a specific temperature. The percent error is going to tell us our accuracy. The standard deviation is going to tell us our percent, our precision. Now we're going to work on this data as a class. I'm going to set up a Google spreadsheet where you're going to put all of your information and you're going to, we're going to collect it as one whole class set. Every group does three trials. And if we have 12 groups, then we have 36 data points where we can get a, a reliable standard deviation and hopefully determine a precision. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna turn on your thermometer. Now, if you're using the digital thermometer, you're just gonna read the temperature. If you are using the regular thermometer, you're going to record your temperature to one place past the decimal in degree C. You're gonna enter that into the, the data table in the Google Sheets. We're gonna average the class temperature just to account for any variation in calibration of the uh, thermometers. So right now it's 22.0. I write 22.0 in my Google Sheet. I take in my thermometer, I put it away. I'm gonna work consistently from this liquid, from this container for the rest of this to contain part. Now, you're gonna to need to get the mass of your empty vessel. So that it's either going to be the beaker, the graduated cylinders, or the, whoops, or the volumetric flask. You're going to get the mass of the empty beaker, the empty dry beaker. So here, if this is the beaker, I put this on, 67.61. I record that in the data table in the Google Sheets. That is for trial one, for trial two, and for trial three. Because once I add liquid to this, you then are going to have a really difficult time trying to get it dry again. So our initial mass, 67.61. It goes for all three trials for the beaker. Now for the beaker, you're gonna follow the instructions. I believe it says you're going to measure out 50 milliliters. So you're going to adjust this until you get as close to what you think is 50 as possible. For the 100 mil graduated cylinder, it says to do 50 as well. So what you're going to do, you get the mass of the empty graduated cylinder, dry, record that, that is the mass for all three trials. You are then going to add water until it's almost at 50. So I'm going to take my beaker, I'm going to pour in water until it's almost at 50. And then I'm going to adjust the volume with my pipette until it reads 50 mils at eye level. And so I'm tilting this right now, so you really won't be able to see this, but remember you're going to duck down and look at it at eye level. You and your partner should agree that you both have the 50 milliliters. You are then going to get the mass of the full graduated cylinder. Then you can dump the water back in the beaker. We can reuse all this water. And remember we're using distilled water. Then I'm going to do the same thing. Add until I'm almost at 50, adjust until I'm exactly at 50. Three trials with my graduated cylinder, three trials with my beaker. The 10 mil graduated cylinder, I'm gonna get the mass dry. That's my initial mass for all three trials. I'm gonna fill it until it's almost at 10, adjust with the dropper, read at eye level. You and your partner agree that you have exactly 10. You're gonna get the mass with it full. For the volumetric flask, we're using 100 mils. The volume of this is 100 mils once you have the water, the bottom of the meniscus, at this line right here. Sometimes they're um, printed on, sometimes they're etched on. Like this one's etched, I can feel a little, a little um, marking right here. So in order to fill this, 
you're going to take your water and you're going to pour it in until we're probably, the water is probably about the bottom level of the neck. So we're pouring it in. You are then going to add water until we are at, the meniscus is at that ground glass line. And again, I'm tilting it right now so you won't be able to see it very clearly, but the bottom of the meniscus is gonna be at this line. Once I have it filled up, and I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm consistent, you and your partner have decided that it's exactly 100 mils, I get the mass. You're gonna pour the liquid back. You're gonna do that two more times. Now the computer program is set up to calculate the density for you. And then we're going to calculate out an average density for the class. The average density for the class is going to, is what you're going to compare the true density value to to get your percent error. The standard deviation is what you're gonna look at to get your precision. Okay, the second part of the lab, we're working with two different pieces of equipment that are designed to deliver a set amount of volume or set amount of solution. So one right here, this is called a volumetric pipette. It just looks like a big straw that has a, a bulb in the center of it. And we can get them what, as what are called volumetric, which means they deliver a set volume, or we can do uh, volumetric, which means that it's gonna have markings and you can deliver different amounts. Now what this does is we've got a small tip on this end and I have a bigger opening on this end. I need to get the liquid in here somehow. So I use a bulb or I use a pipette filler. If you guys get good at using the bulb, we, we can transition to the filler, but I'm gonna teach you how to use the bulb first. So the first thing, this, is, this has an opening here that's um, at an angle and allows us to just sort of gently push this on to make a seal. Now, whenever I go to put the bulb on, I need to hold up close. You're gonna hold up about where this marking is, where the color is, and you're gonna put it on like this. And you're gonna put it on till it's snug. Don't jam it on, okay? And then you're gonna hold it like this. You should always be putting the bulb on when your pipette is horizontal to the bench. Do not jam this down into the liquid and then put the bulb on on top while you're pushing down on the counter because what's gonna happen is it potentially can damage the tip. So you hold up close, you put the bulb on, you squeeze, you then put it into the liquid and you gently and slowly release the bulb. Okay, now what the bulb is doing it's creating lower pressure, which is allowing the liquid to fill up into the pipette. And you're going to allow the liquid to fill up so that it's above the marking line. Some it's ground glass, some there's a little mark. Do not let it continue until the water is up in the bulb, because if it gets up in the bulb, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get liquid in the bulb, which is bad. And you're also not gonna be able to adjust the height of this meniscus very easily. So once you get that liquid above the marking line, you are then going to gently, slowly, just lift your finger up, lift the thumb up, until you start seeing that meniscus go down. And you're gonna do this over some water. And you're gonna stop when the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus is exactly on that marking line. And you do that by adjusting the pressure that your thumb has on the top of the pipette. You are now ready to deliver the uh, sample, or the fancy name for it is aliquot, to your beaker. So now this beaker here is not dry. It doesn't matter because I have, I'm gonna subtract out any liquid that's in here, okay? So I note down that it's 68.17. I take my thumb off of it and I let the water gravity drain directly down into the beaker. And you're just gonna have to be patient and let it drain all the way out. The important part about this is this is designed to deliver 25 milliliters. In order, once that's done, how you know it's done is, is we don't get any liquid coming out, but there's going to be a little teeny bit of water left in the tip you leave that there, you don't blow that out. Because if you do, you've now delivered a little bit more than 25 mils. So you let it gravity drain, okay? You get any last little bit of drop off, but you notice there's some water in there, leave it, 
put it put this aside now when you put it down be aware this is round it rolls so don't put it this way close to the counter so it can roll off put it perpendicular to the counter in between things so it won't roll anywhere record your mass now this is the final mass of the container plus the sample I do not need to redo anything or remass anything or just leave this value. This becomes my initial mass for the next sample. So I'm going to fill this up until I get my 25 mils. And let's pretend I have it. I then drop it in. Now be careful if you get any liquid on the balance, you're gonna to need to wipe that off. Let this drain. So the final mass from trial one becomes the initial mass for trial two. Add your sample, let it gravity drain until that last little drop goes in and record your final mass. And then you're gonna need to do that a third time for three trials with your pipette. I highly recommend you practice with your pipette three, four, five times before you start collecting data. All right, the last piece of equipment we're gonna be using is something called a burette. Now this is a burette right here. So it basically is, it's a graduated cylinder that has this valve apparatus and this tip at the bottom. Now this is the bottom part and we have a, a sharp tip, sharp so to speak, at the bottom. And then this right here is where we have the valve. This whole thing is called a stopcock. This valve right here, the handle, when it's parallel to the burette, it means it's full open. When it's perpendicular, it means it's full closed. And then we can get dropwise by manipulating this very slowly. Now, one thing to note is the marking at the bottom is 50, marking at the top is zero. So the markings go top to bottom, unlike a graduated cylinder, it's a reverse. Now, how we use this is first, we're gonna put it into our pipette clamp. I squeeze these two right here. So let me open and turn this a little bit. I squeeze these two, I put this in, and I, I let it close. And then you wanna make sure that it's in these little notches that are in these clamps here. When you go to fill it, you can slide this down a little bit. Don't jam the tip onto the counter but slide it down so that the top of it, right there, is within hand's reach, okay? If need be, you can adjust it smaller or you can stand on a step stool. Now you can fill it with a funnel or you can fill it with just by pouring the beaker in. Since we're just dealing with water, pouring the beaker in is probably fine because if it spills, it's really not a big deal. If you want a funnel, we can get a funnel. There are these little tiny funnels that we use to fill burettes. First thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure the valve is closed. If the valve is open, the water's gonna just go right through. Okay, we tend to leave it open when they're not in use so that it can dry out completely. So what you're gonna do is you are going to add liquid, add your water, just gently pour it in until the water level is below the zero mark. So you wanna stop, okay, see I went above it a little bit. The zero mark is right here. The meniscus is a little higher. This needs to be below the zero so you can get an initial measurement. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drain a little bit out. I'm gonna slide this up. I'm gonna put my beaker underneath it. Drain a little so that I'm below the zero mark. Now notice how I put this underneath it. I didn't jam it into the tip, I tilted it and brought it under so I can, I'm not hitting that tip, okay? What you're now gonna do is you're gonna record the initial volume in the burette. Now, sometimes it helps to put a piece of paper behind it um, and then it helps you see the meniscus a little bit better. So I'm gonna bring this up, I'm gonna bring this behind. And so you can see that the meniscus, and it's easier for me to see in person obviously than on the video, is gonna be between one and two. And obviously I can narrow that down because I have markings every 0.1. So all my volume readings better be two past the decimal, estimating in between the tenths place. So I'm gonna read this volume and 
if this was me doing the lab, I would report that volume as an initial volume. So right now, this volume is at 1.57, okay? Now the directions say to add 20 milliliters with the burette. So if I'm at 1.57, I need to deliver the 20 milliliters, I need to deliver until it's at 21.57. So I'm going to move this up. So you're gonna add 20 to whatever your initial measurement is. I'm gonna move my balance over. I'm gonna put my vessel underneath. Again, it doesn't matter if it's dry because we're gonna subtract that out, record the mass, and then I'm going to just let this go wide open until it gets very close to 21.57. So I probably would stop it when it's at about 21. So I'm just gonna let it go and I'm gonna show you here that you see how that's going down very quickly. I'm gonna stop it. Now I'm at 21, so I stopped it. Now what I need to do, and again, you should practice with this, is I'm going to slowly open this until I can get it drop, drop, drop. So slowly open. Drop, drop, drop. And you can go even slower. I'm not quite there yet. That's a good pace. You see how it's really slow? Okay, now I'm at roughly 21.57. You're gonna do an even better job than I just did. Record the mass, 87.65. I need to deliver another 20 milliliters. So I take my initial reading that's here, which is the 21.57, add 20 to that, 41.57, open it completely and you'll be able to see this starting to come down very quickly into the video. I'm going to let it go until it reads about 41. Here it comes now. Okay, and then I'm going to stop it. Then I'm going to go drop by drop by drop, and you're gonna practice this. See, I'm going very slowly until it's at about the 41.57. Once I have it where I need it to be, I shut it off, I record the mass. And just like with the pipette, your final mass from the first trial becomes your initial mass in the second trial. Your final mass from the second trial becomes your initial mass in the third trial, so you don't have to keep re-zeroing the balance, okay? For the third trial, you are gonna to have to add more water into your burette, because I don't have 20 more milliliters of water. If you overshoot it, and you end up going to say 43, restart, you're gonna to have to redo it, okay? So the purpose today is to determine the most accurate and the most precise piece of glassware, and to practice using pipettes and burettes. Okay, so I do want to take a moment to show you the spreadsheet you're going to be working with. So I will share this with you. Your teacher will share this with you. Now, each group is going to be assigned a letter, and you enter data at your letter. Okay, so do not enter the data for someone else. Okay, I'm trying to move this. There we go. All right, now, so if you're group A and you take the temperature of your water, you would put in, say, 24.1. That's pretty warm, but 24.1 going one past the decimal. Once we have our class data, it's going to report the average temperature for the class. We are then going to go to this website, and you would go to 24.1, and the density at that temperature is 0.997271, and that's the standard temperature, standard density for that temperature. That's the accepted value. That is what we're going to use to get our percent errors at the end of the experiment. Okay, so if you're group A, you're going to be on sheet one. This is for the 150 mil beaker. It says 150 mil beaker down here. You're going to get the mass of your empty beaker. That is going to be the same for all three trials. It's the mass of your dry empty beaker. 
then you do 50 mils of water. So let's say the mass of my beaker is 67.21. And let's say this is 115.41. This does the math for you where it calculates the mass of the water, calculates the density. Once everyone's class data is in, standard deviation is already calculated for you. You don't have to calculate that. The average is going to be calculated and you're gonna compare that average density to the density that we got up here. And you're gonna get your percent error for that, okay? So you're gonna do this for the 150 mil beaker when it comes time to do the 100 mil graduated cylinder, mass of the empty graduated cylinder, the same value three times with 50 mils of water, it will do the math for you in these cells. Once everyone's in, it will calculate the average, the standard deviation. You're gonna repeat with the 10 mil graduated cylinder. To move over at the bottom, you just click on this button, 100 mil volumetric flask, mass empty dry, record that three times, and then this. Then you are going to do your pipette. Now remember, what you're gonna do is the mass of the empty, let's say was 67.41. And let's say mass of full was 116.42. Oops, this was over here, 116.42. That becomes, the 116.42 becomes your initial mass for the mass empty. And then it maybe becomes 166.25. And this becomes your initial and then you just do it that way. So your final becomes your initial, final becomes the initial. And you do the same thing with the burette as well. So once everyone has this all filled out, the way this is set up, it will calculate the average for you, the standard deviation, you're gonna do percent error for the average density for each piece of equipment versus the density that we calculated here, that we determined here.